I'm not, getting the. F- I'm picking up here that a lot of people getting injured from training jujitsu. I don't want to go out on a limb and say some crazy shit. Joe, that's controversial. The fact you'd even say that. I know. I'm Have just. It's a hunch. Ladies and gentlemen, we love you, and we appreciate that you like what we do. And it was funny. I was in the states recently, and uh, plenty of love over there. It was awesome. And and tipping is a big thing in the United States. Uh, I noticed that tipping's gone up with inflation, Joe. That's some bullshit because <laughs> tipping over there will run you into the ground. <laughs> it's it's surprising, and uh, yeah, it was minimum tip twenty percent. I was like, hang on, twenty? Twenty is minimum? Oh my god, <laughs> shit! I should have brought more. Um, Aussie dollar not that strong. At the no, moment. we are. So, the <laughs> Aussie dollar is sucking right now, but um, it was a good time. But it, it made me think of this uh, this human exchange where someone, you know, they, they're just doing their job really well and you're like, man, I, I want to pay this person back somehow. And I had had conversations with people recently of them being like, oh, man, I just love all the stuff you do, love to help you however I can. And I said, well, you could tip us by liking what we're doing, subscribing to our channels and then – or following if you're on audio – and then give us a rating. Because here's the thing, guys. For more people, like your good selves, to find this, we need those ratings. Otherwise, we become kind of invisible, whether it's on Spotify or whatever other platform you're listening on. So help us out. We'd very much appreciate it. Like, subscribe, but also give us a five-star rating. We'd appreciate you. Because Now, we've got some questions, Joseph. We've got a couple of questions coming in. Please. First one back this year, actually. Let's go first cap off the ranks. Hello, my name is Ray. I've been listening to the show for a long time, but this is my first time reaching out. Um, I am a 36-year-old woman, three-stripe white belt, been training a little over a year. Um, I was doing two days of boxing, two days of jujitsu, and two days of weightlifting every week with the seventh day off to recover. Nice. Um, but I have suffered some sort of mysterious hip injury. Mm. It's not like I was in the middle of something and felt a pop or anything weird like that. Um, just slowly over time, stretching before practice became less and less effective at resolving a aching hip. Um, so, I went to the doctor. They assigned me a month of physical therapy, which really didn't do a lot for my pain. Um, And also, they were not able to identify the nature of my injury. So we still don't know if it's a sprain or a strain or a tendon issue or what. Um, And I'm wondering about my path back to jujitsu. What signs should I be looking for before I return? And what precautions should I take as I return? Um, thank you guys so very much. You have a great show and I always love listening to it. Have a wonderful day. Oh, what a what legend. A, what a sweetie. Thanks, Thanks Ray. You. Really appreciate hey, that. Hey, do you reckon Ray. Ray's from Chicago? Uh, I don't know. I don't want to assume. You don't want to. But I, I like trying to pick the accent. I'm like, <laughs> doctor. Anyway, you don't want uh, <laughs> You don't want to, you don't want to project because Chica- Chicagoans are very proud and you don't want to mislabel somebody, especially if she's like. No, I'm I'm from Iowa. I'll kill you. Like, yeah, don't three strap white belt, bro. How dare you? It's okay. She boxes too, man. Don't <laughs> around. Yeah, she trains hard. Uh, look, right. Look, I think the first thing I'm always uh, wary of whenever you get joint pain, you want to make sure everything is structurally intact. So, um, if you haven't had an MRI um, to say, oh, maybe like because you know you could tear a labrum or you could. There could be a bunch of stuff going on there that we just don't know about. So I don't want to uh, misattribute or say the wrong thing. You know, this is not medical advice. But if you were here right now and, and you're my client, I was trying to help you, we'd want to know the exact nature of the injury. So the fact that they couldn't actually tell you what was wrong with your hip, that for me straight away is like, oh, that needs further investigation. So let's just find out if, you're, if all the structures of the hip are okay. Because, for example, a friend of mine had hip pain for many years and he just thought he was tight. But actually, he had um, a bony growth over where there should have been a dip, but it just meant his hip couldn't move properly. Yeah. And, and this is a genetic thing. And he actually had to get surgery for them to grind it Shave back. it off. It's pretty brutal. Yeah. And, and, and this is just well beyond like my pay grade in terms of giving you advice. But this is what I'd say the caveat on that is. If your hip is structurally sound, there's no issues in that way, what you want to have a look at is 
identifying what makes it worse because this can be one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle. A lot of the time people are always like, yeah, just chuck more stuff on, this will make it better, this will make it better, when actually there might be something habitual or something underlying which is causing you a lot of hip pain. So a friend of mine, he had really bad hip problems and it was related to his car. He had bucket seats, so he sat low, he's a long leg human, but his hip was always lower than his knee. So he's chronically in this position. And the way he sits when he drives, he turns his foot out to the side, you know? And he ended up with impingement and piriformis itis. So anyway, this is just an aside. One of the big changes he had to make was he had to sit up on a cushion to elevate his hip because he wouldn't get new car seats because he f- loves those bucket seats. That's no longer fast and furious. No, nah, brah. Um, so anyway, it was just one of those things that once he actually changed his sitting position, this alleviated a lot of stress in his hips. He didn't fix it entirely, but it took a lot of pressure off. So my tip would be once you know your hip is sound, it's not actually a structural issue, then I would say try and identify what might be um, causing the problem from a more chronic point of view. Like you said, it wasn't like an acute snap and something went wrong. This is built up over time. So we need to have a look at that. People say, what's your secret, JT? Why are your muscles so pumped? Why are you so strong on the mats? Is it the secret sauce? No, it's not. It's hydration, my friends. I every day am using SODI. S-O-D-I-I. I use it in the morning first thing, usually when I have my creatine, and I also have it before training. I'll dilute a sachet into about 500, 600 mils of water, and it just keeps me going. I don't get headaches, I don't get cramps, and I don't get tired as quickly. So this is the sachet version. They also have tubs, which is really good too, and they have awesome flavors. This is my favorite, which is salty grapefruit, they have their citrus, they've got pineapple, they've got so many good flavors, it's definitely worth checking out. So, you my friends, if you would like to be better hydrated, feel pumped, feel strong, get on the real magic sauce, which is Sodi. You can get a 15% discount when you use discount code bulletproof15, sodi.com.au. What are your thoughts, Joe? Yeah, I agree with all that. Um Refresh me. Did Ray say she was doing jits, kickboxing, and boxing? Um, no, uh, boxing and lifting. Boxing and lifting. Okay, potentially, I don't know, but could be a, could be training too much. Possibly right? could be a thing. Could also not be, but that's worth looking into. Like, and and if, and that's not going to fix your acute, like the pain that you're in right now. Um, but yeah, just looking at like, all right, am I, am I also doing a full time job, and maybe I need to back off on something that I'm doing a little bit. Um, yeah, jiu-jitsu, you can play a very hip-dominant game. Yeah. I like to. I like to play a lot of X-guard, butterfly guard, that kind of thing. It's, and I'm always pulling people in, using, like, Onto loading the them up. Yeah. And so if I've got something going on at the front of the hip, maybe it's a little bit irritated, who knows why, maybe I've been sitting down a lot, that style of game might, like, I might be really f-ing sore after training. Yeah. Yeah becomes a chronic thing on the flip side if i go hey i'm just going to take my hips out of the equation and play more top game for a little while yeah all of a sudden i'm no longer like using that area in the same way and it's it it, you know it's it's really quite different on the body so have a look at what you're doing in jiu-jitsu that might also be a bit of a clue as to um what's causing it your return might be okay let's focus on stuff that doesn't aggravate it yep uh once you get to a point where it's no longer an issue then you can reintroduce and I just want to put a little caveat there for, from the boxing perspective. Um, boxing does set your hips up in a certain way. And, and what I found is when I was boxing, I boxed for two years, um, my right calf got f***ing jacked because you're always trying to keep your back heel off the ground for like the moving forward and backwards, right? Mm. You, don't, you don't train both sides in boxing. You're like, no, this is my lead hand and this is my, my power hand. And that's how they train. What can happen is... I just Stand square and Stand bang. square and just swaying, yeah, baby. Bam, bam. Here's the thing. That's why they call me Joey Vitor Worthington. <laughs> I thought it was the natural, but sure. Let's just, AKA. In Brazil. Just, <laughs> <laughs> let's just throw it on there. Joey TRT Worthington. Um, <laughs> thank you, Vitor Belfort. We love you. Um, but the thing is, you might be doing something which is dumping a lot of weight into that hip. You might have a tight knee or a tight calf on one side, which means because you're tighter on one side, you're using that side too much. 
So it can be a compensation thing. Uh, like Fuck, a, I got one more piece of advice. Please. For Ray. It sounds to me like the physical therapist you went to are maybe not the right one for the job. Yep. I would be getting leads from people in the game, go to the people at jiu-jitsu, go to the higher belts because they're the ones that have usually dealt with the most amount of injuries. Sure. And be like, who do you guys see when you got a bad shoulder or whatever? Because they're going to be like, oh, I got to, you know, hopefully I got a dude or I got a girl, you got to go see them, they're the best. Yep. When you see someone that has a holistic view, they understand jiu-jitsu, they, they get it and that like – that can be the difference between an outcome and never getting to an outcome, which is, yeah. oh, we treated you for a month and don't know what the issue is. Yeah. That's kind of bullshit. Yeah, and look, it could be a good outcome versus you got, they're like, well, you've got to see a surgeon. And the surgeon's like, well, you have to get surgery, and then that might not actually be true. Yeah. You know? 100. Cool. Keep us updated, by the way. Please. I'd love to hear what the outcome is there, Ray. Hopefully that, hopefully that was helpful. I'm excited. Why is that? We have an apparel sponsor, Parry Athletic. Such good gear, and it's incredible. I've, I've been enjoying it. Bro, George came through, messaged us on the Instagram, said he's been following our program for ages, he's getting stronger and more mobile, and he's got this cool gear company called Parry, and he wants to send us some stuff. And he told me that his mission was to create the best pair of training shorts ever. Yeah, he wanted something that he could lift and roll in and that could accommodate thick muscular thighs and hips. And that suits us. Speaks to us. Also, what I like is I love the colorful design. It's It actually looks really cool. I am the most colorful dude on the mats these days, hands down. Yeah, you get that kind of expression feel. A lot of other jiu-jitsu gear is kind of a bit boring. Yeah, it's, it's like all like grays and blacks and shit. This stuff is the color and the vibrancy. It makes you stand out. And uh, I think... The thing that I've loved about it is just it feels good. It feels good. It looks good. And you, ladies and gentlemen, can get a discount when you go to check out. If you go to parryathletics.com, when you go to check out, put in the code BULLETPROOF20 and you get 20% off. Oh, yeah. How are we doing, guys? My name's Blaine. I'm a 23-year-old white belt. been training for about seven months now. Um, my main question here is about injury recovery. So a couple months ago, I took a pretty hard elbow into the side by a 14-year-old girl and popped something in my ribs. I got x-rays. Uh, nothing's broken or anything like that. They just think it's intercostal muscle strain. Mm -hmm. So I took two weeks off after that, stretched, got low, light rolling in. Um, but it just keeps coming back and it's actually spread in between my shoulder blades. I got sharp pain and even down into my lower back a bit and uh, my rib cage. So my question is, I have a tournament on Saturday, which I'll be competing in. And after that, I'm looking to take time to just to rehab this injury. How would you guys go about it? I'm uh, 6'8 and 260 pounds. So I know before I get back into training, I really need to get my core, my upper back, and my lower back dialed in. I've been following your guys' program. But right now, I think the injuries are inflamed enough that anytime I target them directly, target the muscle groups directly, I, it just inflames the injury. So I'm curious how you guys would go about recovering from this injury. What would be your approach um, and any recommendations you have? Thank you, guys. Bruh, sounds like the 14-year-old girl gave old Blaine the f dim muck. <laughs> oh, God. Death touch. Just like, oh, no, oh. it's just a rib thing, and then it's just spread like. <laughs> Poor Blaine. Blaine sounds like a big human, and Six, he eight. just got 260, bro. Bro, that's a huge surface that's area big, to have pain rib too. Cage, yeah. yeah. Look. Oh, that's a shit injury. Ribs. Two weeks. I'm getting the I'm picking up here that a lot of people getting injured from training jiu-jitsu. I don't want to go out on a limb and say some crazy shit. Joe, that's controversial, the fact you'd even say that. I know. I'm how, just, it's a hunch. How you dare will. you? How dare you? You're a conspiracy theorist. You get that tinfoil hat, get the f*** out of here. Um, no, I look into it. Um, here's the thing. Two weeks is not enough time, Blaine. I don't know who you talk to. You, you need to go back and have a listen to our rib injuries episode. It's going to take months. Ribs... Like sternal cartilage takes forever to settle down. So if it's not a cracked rib and your intercostal muscles are okay, you can irritate the cartilage that surrounds your rib cage. And that shit just doesn't go away in two weeks. Also, what the f*** are you doing a tournament for? <laughs> you can't do our workouts, but you're going to do a tournament? Are you f crazy, bro? No, don't do the tournament. It's five days ago he recorded the message. Oh, uh, yeah. He won. He broke his other rib. Yeah. <laughs> He's champion, but now can't breathe shit or laugh. Look, here's the thing, man. Ribs, we've had a few questions about this. It is incredibly hard because your ribs are always moving. When you breathe, 
there's always this expand, contract. This, it's always happening. So you can't get rid of that. But training jiu-jitsu and taking any, it's not even just the sit-ups and stuff. It's any direct impact. Like that's what you had. You had yeah. a direct impact injury from a young but deadly lady. Um, mate, the fact that it's gotten worse and you're feeling this in other parts of your rib cage is because you are most likely trying to compensate to work around it and it's creating more problems. You're not going to want to hear this, my guy, but I'm going to say you need to just take a month to chill. And also you need to get treatment. One of the things which is difficult is getting blood flow in there to help things heal and settle down. That actually requires a little bit of really soft manual work to help things settle down. Doing more work doesn't equate to better, which is you've kind of touched on that. Doing more exercises isn't the thing. The hardest thing for you, my big rig friend, is chilling. That's what I'll say. Yeah, chilling. Like, don't just lie on the couch. No. But, like, it's it's not about working out and you, you just – you can't do anything that's going to aggravate it and anything in jiu-jitsu is going to aggravate it and probably most things in the gym are going to aggravate it. Like, you could do some biceps if you wanted to. But even that, right, you might end up, <laughs> like, tight. using your serratus or your lat <laughs> and then you're like, oh, I flared it up again, you know. <laughs> Um, so don't even train arms. The yeah, I I think the manual therapy is a huge one. I would be like I've always really liked needling, whether yep. it's acupuncture or dry needling. I found like for those nitty gritty kind of areas like that that are like hard to get into, man, needling for me is a f- big one. Mm. But again, go find a therapist that does that kind of thing, whether it's hands or needles or some other shit. I think that's a great way forward. Yeah, definitely. And and the the hardest thing is to accept that with connective tissues and that's what you know cut cartilage can form that as a point um i might be wrong in that might be cartilage might classify as a hard tissue but what i'd say is it takes longer to heal it's not the same as getting a bruise or a muscle tear and it heals in a couple days and when it calms down is not up to you (laughs) so if you've got other things going on in your life that are stressful that can also affected as well so yeah definitely man it takes longer than you expect and you definitely need to find somebody who can help you smooth out the rough edges on that one yeah um kind of overarching this whole thing rib injuries of all the kind of minor jiu-jitsu injuries you get Mm. are probably the most frustrating yeah because you sort of feel fine yeah right if you're just walking around and doing your day-to-day like i feel good Mm. and the, like i don't know but also when you flare it up you kind of just set yourself back yeah you're like oh you you did good you took a couple of weeks off and then you flared it up again now you're back at square one yeah so if you don't treat it with that respect and take a good chunk of time off like you're suggesting jt you, you're stuck in this limbo Loop. for a long time yeah for sure but we feel for you blaine we feel for you and um let us know how you go in terms of treating that and your your path to recovery i think that's an all-american q a coming through today it is from ray and blaine yeah our cousins how we appreciate that? you yeah, f- very cool represent we've got to get more familiar with the uh, accents so we don't mislabel anybody <laughs> ray i want you to let me know <laughs> if i was right in saying chicago or if I was wrong, and uh, in which case, where are you from? I'm I'm camp, not not, not Chicago. <laughs> you gonna have a go? Have a go? No, I can't. I can't pick. I'm I'm I, I have no idea. I'm just gonna say that I don't believe she's from Chicago. But hey, I mean, well, that's a pick of sorts. It is. Yeah, that is my that's my pick. I don't. Okay, I couldn't pick the dialect exactly. I can't wait to find out now. Yeah, it'd be good. Let hey, us know. um, guys, if you want to leave us a question, go to the website bulletproofforbjj.com. Go to the podcast page. You can record us a voicemail. We'll play it on the episode. We'll even answer the question. We'll see you on the next one.